How to install a floor pan, 1964 Impala SS. Let's go. Now in the previous video, we had removed the floor pan by rough cutting it. That means getting the majority of the metal out of the way. Now that revealed some issues in the inner rockers. Yeah, there's a couple pretty big holes that I'm going to show you how to deal with. But first, we're going to remove the remnant and we're going to locate the resistance welds that held the floor pan skin in place to the rocker. Now, there's a couple of ways you could do this. You could drill out all the spot welds or resistance welds, but my preferred method is using an air hammer. Now, for every joint, you can't use an air hammer. Most of them, yeah, you can. And you can see why I prefer this method. It is so much faster, and I don't have holes drilled everywhere in the metal that I'm going to be welding on top of. So, yeah, I could just plow right through that stuff. Uh... Now that leaves a little bit of a divot where the original resistance weld was, but I'm going to show you how to deal with that. And this is what I'm talking about. You can see that little divot where uh, the metal tore away from the floor pan. So working the air chisel, I can remove that to flush. So much quicker, so much further ahead, don't have holes. Okay, now... For the floor braces underneath, same method. And what you have to do is use the air hammer for multiple angles. You can't just put it in one spot, pull the trigger, and go gung-ho on that thing. Yeah, you'll uh, you'll rip into the metal really easy. Okay, so now we've got this uh, cleared off. That's where the old braces were. This is the where the rear of the pan affixed it's looking really good see the errors we're going to be repairing there and now this is the leading edge of the floor pan okay now we're going to use a wire wheel and get all of this uh, area cleaned up we want to move any uh, rust scale or as much of undercoating as we possibly can. Get the surface really nice and clean. And now we're going to start prepping the area. Because we've, before we sandwich these parts together and uh, weld them back together, we are going to apply a coating. Now, I use either Weld Through Primer or POR15. But first, we're going to uh, repair this inner rocker. Yeah, this car had some of the best rockers I've ever seen on a vehicle of this age. And now we want to, we, I laid it out with tape because I want to make a straight line as possible. And there's the damaged area. The rest of it looks really nice. So now we're going to make a template. And after we have this template form, we're going to transfer that to a donor piece that we're going to weld in there. And you can see we're just shaping it. And now here's the trick. If you get a really nice tight fit, I'm just impressing my finger along the edge and what that's doing that's transferring a scribe line to the construction paper and I'll show you here in a second yeah you can already see the uh, lines coming through now that's going to be an exact template are very very close so we're gonna get that cut out and 
And let's check our fit. Boom. We're good to go. We're going to get this uh, transferred to metal, get it cut out. And then we're going to apply PR15 to the inside. Yeah, I know nobody's ever going to know, but I'll know. So we're just going to do the best craftsman professional job we can. And we're going to also apply it to that lip there. Now, once this dries, we'll be able to weld through that. I didn't put a really thick coat on. We're going to get the area cleaned up with a flap wheel. I've already applied POR15 to the inside of the donor piece. Let's see what we have. Not bad. Now, here's a tip if you're MIG welding. If you're TIG welding, you want zero gap. If you are MIG welding, you want, well, depending on the thickness of the metal, uh, you want a slight gap. Because if you don't, with a MIG process, that will crowd the metal and it will make it either go in or out when you heat it with the welding process with MIG. So you always have to have a gap when you MIG weld. And we're just keeping everything nice and straight and lined up with those uh, little magnets there. And we spot weld this thing in. You want to do, you don't want to just take off in a straight line or it will get out of shape on you very quickly. And here it is finished. It just takes a little bit of time to, you just do a circular motion and uh, skip a little, let it cool. And now we're dressing down that area. And here's where you want to really pay attention with your, whatever tool you're using to grind down the weld. Because if you gouge the metal, uh, you're going to have problems. It's going to be ugly. So we want to try to be flush. Now we're coming back with the flap wheel. And we are working it. And you always want to keep in mind whenever you're using uh, any type of machine sanding, you're removing metal. You don't want to re you want to remove the least amount of metal as possible. Okay, you can see we're blending everything in. And now we're going to finish that thing off. This is some 36 grit on an 8 inch orbital. Yeah, I'm going to call that a nice repair. And I've also taken care of the other side. Things looks nice, straight, good to go. Okay, moving on. Now we're going to go around and straighten all of the flanges. One way to make yourself a better welder is to prep the prep the uh, or the fit and fit and prep. <laughs> Got tongue tied. Yeah, you want to prep everything and get a nice fit on everything. Then your welding will be will go much better. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, do this whole inside of the rocker. In all of the areas, we're going to be uh, sandwiching metal together with the POR15, let it dry overnight. And we've got a couple of little tabs here. We don't want to forget. They'll be easier to do outside of the car than inside. Now I'm punching plug weld holes on the firewall. Prepping this area for uh, mating the floor pan here. And there it is. Now in the previous video, we've already transferred all of our brackets, prepped the floor pan. Go back, check that video out, and bring you up to speed. Yeah, it was almost like, I don't know if this is going to work out. But we're able to... Uh, Maneuver that thing in there. And there it is. Now we're going to get it positioned into place. And you can see we have 
pretty nice straight lines. Everything's parallel. That's a good sign. Yeah, the back is laying down really flat up against there. The front, we're going to get that thing clamped and uh, sandwiched together. And we always try to not use hammers or metal hammers. Yeah, we don't want to scar things up, put damage into new parts. So if you can use a wood, piece of wood or mallet, yeah, that's what you want to do. Now we're going to get that thing clamped together. And I always just hit the uh, leading edge of the firewall, just get that all welded out, and then work backwards. That's just me. The guy can do it any way he wants. And people always ask me about settings. Now, we're doing 18 gauge, and those are pretty hot settings. And that's where the fit comes into place. Because if I have the angle of my gun wrong, or a bad fit, I'm going to blow right through that metal. But this is going to allow me to get some really nice flat welds and we're going to go in here and do some safety welds from the uh, top side we don't need to get crazy or anything do the same amount on both sides try to keep them below flush because this area is going to get seam sealed And this tool is going to really help out. Okay, first we're going to go under here and get all of the braces welded into place. And the better the fit and weld, the less grinding you have to do. Some guys don't even grind but uh, or dress welds down. But yeah, we're going to always like to do the best job that I can. And instead of hitting this with a hammer, well, we're just going to push it into place. It won't take that much to cinch that thing securely. And since we've done all of our prep work, well... Now, and our machine set correctly, now you can see the type of wells we're able to achieve. Fit up, that's the word I was, I couldn't think of earlier. Yeah, any welder is going to tell you, it's most of it, most of welding is in the fit up. And what the goal is with this, well, with what I'm doing, is to mimic the resistance welds that the factory would have installed. But we don't, that's a, yeah, not that many people have that machine that would allow us to resistance weld this particular joint. Now, I have a resistance welder, but yeah, no, nothing like the factory had. But we're good to go, man. This is going to work out really well. And you can see we haven't beat up the area with a hammer or anything. Maybe a slight indentation from the uh, C-clamp, but that's it. Yeah, happy with those welds. Really nice and flat. Okay, driver's side. Now in some areas, it's uh, more practical just to use a screw, hold it into place. But you can see our fit along the back edge.
Yeah, I literally didn't need to uh, put in any screws or anything like that. You can get that knocked out. Okay, now we're just going to knock off the tops of these welds with a flat disc. And now you can really see or get a visual on what I'm talking about. You do, a, uh, do your prep right and get a good weld. If you're finishing things out nicely, now you don't have to do a bunch of grinding. I mean, we just skimmed off the top of those. This is 80 grit on a, a little mini DA. And you don't have to do this, but I don't like to get uh, paint everywhere. And I've come back, I've scotch brighted this whole area, but now I'm going to use a little bit of epoxy paint, black, and I don't want to leave any bare steel because sometimes things will rust really quickly. I didn't do all this work to uh, see rust on it. Prepping the uh, front of the firewall. Hey, get ready because uh, we're getting ready to cut this car all up in the next upcoming videos. That's the, uh, this is the floor. You can see the fitment, the welding. It's going to be really hard for somebody to walk up and say, oh yeah, I see what you did. Yeah, it's a, I, the goal is for everything to look very factory. Nice fitment. Good welds. Now, seam sealer is going to go in this uh, uh, gap or that line anyway. So once that seam sealer is over that and there's a coating or whatever, I don't know if we're going to paint inside here. Man, that thing will look gold. Okay, that's that. Moving on to the quarter. As always, thanks for watching.